Dear students, today we are having our seventh lecture. It's also related to psycholinguistics and we will continue on from where we broke off in the previous lecture. Now we were talking about the different methods of um, memories. So we were talking about the sensory vision and uh, the working memory. Now what we are going to talk about today is the permanent memory. Now permanent memory, which is also known as long-term memory, LTM, is a repository of our knowledge of the world. Now LTM permanent memory, that is what we gather. Like I had told you, we start gathering information and memories since our childhood. And we gather them and uh, that is sort of stored in our permanent memory. Now, uh, all of the information and all of the things that we gather from the world uh, is stored in our permanent memory. So this includes general knowledge, including the rules of grammar or of uh, arithmetic, uh, along with personal experiences such as memories of our childhood and adolescence. So sometimes hum uh, worldly things bhi yaad karte hain hamari permanent memory mein wo cheezein store hoti hain jo general knowledge hai like knowing uh, about the different countries knowing what's going on around you in your city in your country in uh, some other country including grammar ke rules or mathematics aap kaise jo hai the way people solve them in their mind along with personal experiences so personal experiences aapki apni memories ho gayi of your childhood or your younger days when you were growing up. So Tolving, um, who is a researcher, has distinguished between two types of permanent memory. Now they've taken two types of permanent memory and divided it. One would be semantic memory and episodic memory. So one would be semantic memory and episodic. Episodic would be like uh, we divide them into episodes and semantic would be with the meaning of that. Now, a semantic memory, what it refers to basically, is to, um, refers to our organized knowledge of words. How we organize words, concepts, symbols, and objects. Now, it includes our general knowledge, our grammar, our arithmetic, our spatial knowledge, the typical layout of a house, social knowledge, and how and when to be polite, etc. All of these things would come into our semantic memory. How we would remember a concept, a symbol, an object, and the typical layout of our house or any house, or when we have to be polite and when we don't, the people where we have to be formal. All of those things would be in our semantic memory. Now semantic memory holds the information that is not tagged for a particular time or place. For example, it holds the information that horses have four legs and a tail, but not the memory of the last time you went horseback riding. So, semantic memory, your basics, you will remember that there will not be a particular time and place mentioned in that. Your memory, which you are storing, you are storing general information. For example, that there are four horses with four legs, there is a tail, ठीक है लेकिन ये याद नहीं हो गए आपके सेमेंटिक मेमोरी में कि आप लास्ट टाइम जो है घोड़ सवारी के लिए कब गए सो दैट वुडन बी इंक्लूडेड इन इट सो व्हाट यू रिमेंबर इज जस्ट द बेसिक्स द जनरल पॉइंट्स now episodic memory, now the difference between semantic memory and episodic memory, now episodic memory holds traces of events that are specific to a particular time and space ये उन traces या उन events को specify करती है जो किसी खास time और space पे this is the memory we use to keep a record of our personal experiences episodic memory according to an episode जैसे मैंने कहा कि जैसे like even like if you are watching a TV serial you have episodes different episodes that means different sets of programs that you are watching come in in a sequence now episodic memory would be similar to that it would be keeping a record of your personal experiences according to a particular time and space it includes such items as what you had for breakfast this morning what you were doing when you learned a man walked on the moon or where you got your first job, 
Uh, as these examples illustrate, episodic memory varies from person to person and is constantly updated. So, episodic memory, har insan ka different hota hai. Person se person vary karta hai. Sometimes, aapke kya apne naashte mein kya khaya hai, thik hai? Aap kya kar rahe the at a certain time or place? Aapki pehli job kaha thi? For example, aapke, um, aapne ये चीजें आपकी अपडेट होती रहती हैं। Like constantly, it gets updated because by the time passes, like you keep on uh, going through events, and then these things get updated. So it's not just a permanent memory where you are thinking about something, as in a semantic memory, but episodic would be specifying a specific time or place that that memory happened. For example, you'll remember that uh, at such and such date, I went to a friend's home. So that would be an episodic memory. But remembering that, yeah, my friend lives at such and such place or such address, that would be a semantic memory. That would be just the general knowledge of knowing that you, where your friend lives. But you, an episodic memory would be when you remember exactly the time and the day you went and visited your friend at that place. The next would be procedural memory. Now, procedural memory is sometimes di distinguished from the other two memory structures. So we have the semantic and episodic memory. Now, procedure would be a little bit different. Uh, it spe uh, specifically includes information about motor skills, like typing, swimming, bicycling, etc. So, procedural memory wo hai aapki, jo aapke aise skills ko recognize karti hai. Like, you remember how to type, you remember how to swim, you remember how to bicycle, you remember how to drive a car, you remember to perform a task. When you're performing a task, anything that is involving your motor skills, that is procedural memory. Now, relevance of these mental structures for uh, language processing, for example. Now, how do these concepts, sensory stores, short-term and working memory, long-term memory, apply to the problem of how we comprehend spoken language? Now, if you think about it, how do we understand this thing? How do we understand how we use spoken language? So, how do these concepts, uh, the sensory stores, short-term, Working memory or long-term memory. Ye kaise us problem, any problem to any, to the problem of how we comprehend spoken language. Hum spoken language ko understand kaise karte hain, ye saari cheezen usse relate kaise karte hain. Now, in comprehension, we may assume that we, uh, as we hear a sentence, the sounds are first stored very briefly in the auditory sensory store. So, first of all, understanding mein, agar hum comprehension mein dekhe, so, we can assume that when we hear a sentence for the first time, it is stored for a brief time in the sensory store. In the sensory store, it is saved temporarily. Now, the sounds are held in this store for about 2 to 4 seconds. For 2 to 4 seconds, you hold these sounds, which gives us uh, time to recognize an auditory pattern, for example. So, ab ye do se char second, jis mein ye memory hum store kar rahe hain, sensory store mein, gives us the time to recognize an auditory uh, pattern, for example, recognize speech sounds. Now, identifying acoustic cues that are present in the speech signal. Wo cheeze recognize karna, acoustic cues hain, <coughs> the signals jo speech signal mein present ho. So, trying to recognize or identify the acoustic cues in a speech signal. Then, organize the sounds into syllables and words. So, sounds ko hum syllables or words mein transfer kaise karte hain. But it is not clear when and how that happens. So, that's, the timing is not clear. Now, see below, later on we'll, in the next slide we'll see, bottom up versus top-down processes. How we go from bottom to top or how from top to down. Those processes. Now, working memory. Uh, in working memory, we discussed that it has two functions, storing and processing. 
So working memory does two things. It stores the information and then it helps you process the language. As regards um, its storing function in working memory is only able to hold about seven units of information. So what it can do is only hold seven units of that information. You're storing in your sensory store for two to four seconds. But in this, you can only use seven units of information. So since many sentences are longer than seven words, we need some way to deal immediately with uh, more than seven words. So seven units, seven words. Okay. Okay. So working memory, if we see the storing function, then uh, it's only able to hold that we can hold seven words in our memory, mein. not more than seven. But since Jumle uh, Johe Aapke, they are longer than seven words. Seven words se to zyada hi lambe jumle bante hai na aapke. So we need some way to deal with them immediately. Now, how do we deal with it when there is a sentence with more than seven words? <clears throat> now, one way we do this is to chunk the words into grammatical constituents such as noun phrase. एक तरीका है हम उसको noun phrase बना देते हैं, chunk कर देते हैं together. We put it together, uh, put the words together into a grammatical constituent. Now, for example, my sister, my sister's boy, my sister's little boy, etc. ये क्या बन जाएंगे? ये noun phrase बन जाएंगे. So हम words को memorize करने के लिए अपने short term memory में क्या करते हैं? Yeah, a working memory me. My sister, my sister's boy, my sister's little boy. We chunk the words together. Unko gather karte hai. Or verb phrase. A verb phrase. Bought a book. Bought a book of desserts. Bought a book of chocolate desserts. So, etc. So, humne chunking kaise kar de? Ke pehle, we bought a book. Didn't discuss what sort of book. Then we bought a book of desserts. Desserts are related. Then we bought a book of chocolate desserts. See, the chocolate desserts are related. So, thereby reducing the storage burden to perhaps two or three constituents. So, we storage burden to two or three constituents, grammatical constituents. This way, we sentence ko break karke. We have our working memory store that. Now, the processing function of working memory is used to organize the words into constituents and to build the phrase structure of an incoming sentence. So, constituents um, organize up kar sakte words ko. Yeah, you can build it to uh, the phrase structure of an incoming sentence. So, jo bhi aapko sunai de rahe, <coughs> sentence mein. A new information enters working memory. Some of the older information is thus re uh, reorganized into larger units. Other information is lost. So, when we gather new information gather karte hai, uh, in our working memory, then uh, we reorganize the older information, which we have stored into larger units. Choti chunkin se, larger units we memorize karte hai. And then most of the other information is lost by that time. So, and still other information is sent to permanent memory. और उसमें से फिर मज़ेद कुछ ऐसी इनफॉरमेशन है जो परमानेंट मेमोरी में सेंड कर दी जाती है। So where the resulting memory trace has both episodic and semantic attributes, जहाँ पे आपके जो resulting memory होगा परमानेंट मेमोरी का जो result बनेगा, that will have both the traces of episodic and semantic. उन दोनों में जो है ना स्टोर हो जाएगा। now, permanent memory. Permanent memory plays several roles. First, semantic memory contains information on the words that we retrieve during pattern recognition. So, semantic memory would contain uh, those uh, words or that information that we retrieve karte hain, that we get, get back from during a pattern recognition. While this process is going on, we are also building up an episodic memory representation of the ongoing discourse. So, meantime, when we store semantic memory mein information store kar rahe hai, or retrieve, kar rahe hai, at that time, this, while this process is going on, we also build up an episodic memory. We build up episodic memory. Ko bhi build up kar rahe hai, saath saath. Representation of the ongoing discourse, which would present whatever is being discussed at the moment. 
Now that is, once we complete the processing of a given sentence, we extract uh, the gist of it and store it in episodic memory. The gist means the main maksad uska. Okay. So, when we complete processing uh, of a given sentence, we complete the given sentence, ka process complete kar lete hain, then we extract the guest. We extract the meaning uh, extract kar lete hain, exact. and we store that in an episodic memory. So, we divide it in an episodic memory. So, the conclusion would be that mental structures and processes that allow the human mind to encode, store and retrieve information can be described independently of language. So, mental structures, yaapki jo processes hain, they allow human mind to encode, in usko understand karna, to store it, and to retrieve. Or jab zarurat hoti hai, to then retrieve karke usko memory se leke aana. Uh, wapas, you can bring it information, you can bring that up to uh, describe independently of language. So, it can be described independently of language. Any language can independently describe kar sakte. Now, modification of these structures and processes. Now, if we look at their modification, dekhe, changing, dekhe, however, provides a framework for understanding how language processes occur. So, ye wo framework create kar deta hai ke, uh, for understanding ke language process kaise occur hota hai. Now, although it is generally agreed that we encode, store and retrieve linguistic information, along uh, the general lines sketched above, the specific processes have yet to be addressed. So, even though ke hum ye generally agree karte hai ke we encode, that we encode, we store, and we retrieve linguistic information. So, we encode, we are trying to understand it, we are trying to hear it, we are trying to store it, we are trying to retrieve it. All of that linguistic information along uh, the general lines sketched above. We have given the general lines of mental structures, uh, structures and processes. Se and the specific processes have yet to be addressed. And now, we have to specific process. Ko address karna hai. So, the first process would be uh, central issues in language processing. Now, basic central issues kya hai language process karne mein. In this section, we examine several alternative ways in which linguistic information can be handled by the information processing system that we have just sketched above. So, in this section, we have sketched a pattern that we have done. How do we handle linguistic information ko hum handle kaise karte hai? by the information processing system? How do we handle it? Different types of process will first be presented and discussed individually before being applied to an extended example of language processing. So, different types of process jo hai, unko hum pehle present karenge, then we'll discuss them individually, alada, before being applied to an extended example of language processing. Isse pehle ke hum usko extended example may use karen language processing ke, we'll first try to present it and discuss it individually. So, when we, when we start discussing them, then we move on to serial and parallel processing. We discussed this before also. Serial processing refers to processes that take place one at a time. Serial, like stepwise. So, those are the processes that take uh, place one at a time. Ek ek karke. Parallel processing. Parallel se matlab aapko pata hona chahiye side by side. So, parallel processing refers to processes, two or more of which take place simultaneously. So, ek saath, ek time pe, do processes ho rahe ho. That would, do ya do se zyada, that would be parallel processing. Now, suppose we wish to develop a model of language production. Ab, agar masal ke pe, we want to develop something, a model. The starting point is the idea that the speaker wants to convey. So, starting point model uh, production, ka language production ka agar hum model banate hain. So, starting point would be, ke speaker aapko convey kya karna cha raha hai? Aap se baat kya karna cha raha hai? Then the ending point is the actual articulation of the idea. But what happens in between? So, ending point uska ho ke basic idea kaise hua? The ending point would be that. But beach mein kya hua? What happens in between? Now, students, I would like you to tell me and think 
read this and tell me like if we are going to make a model of language production the starting point would be when let's say the speaker wants to convey something to you wants to tell you something the ending point would be the articulation or the formulation of the idea final idea wo aapko kya present karna cha raha hai beech mein kya hota hai what do they talk in between so when we talk about the thing that happens in between a serial model would divide the process into stages serial model jo hai usko processes mein divide kar deta hai stages mein okay process ko now there might be a stage devoted to building up the phrase structure of the sentence in a sentence structure ko build karne ke liye maybe they would have um a stage devoted to it another stage devoted to retrieving the lexical items that are inserted into this that structure phir to insert uh, or retrieve or get back the lexical items the vocabulary items uh, that are inserted into uh, that structure jo is a structure mein humne insert ki hai and still another stage would be devoted to determining the correct pronunciation of these lexical items so first point kya hua ke humne ek ye dekh liya ke there might be a stage devoted to building up the phrase a uh, structure of the sentence pehla to build up the structure of the sentence second would be to retrieve the lexical items and third would be determining the correct pronunciation of these lexical items how we pronounce the words the sounds the serial model would assume that these stages occur one at a time with none overlapping so serial model ye assume karega ke maybe ye stages jo hain they ek ek karke hoti hain aur koi ek dusre ko overlap nahi kar rahi hoti but a parallel model ye serial model mein hoga ke wo ek ek karke ye stage hum aa rahe hain ke first we are building the structure of the sentence then we are uh, retrieving the lexical items and then we are um determining the correct pronunciation of the lexical items in a parallel model now on the contrary would assume that all of these processes would take place at the same time so parallel model mein kya hua kyunki ek saath sara kuch chal raha hai to we would say that all of these processes are taking place at the same time ek saath ho raha hai now that is we could be phonetically specifying one word hum phonetically ek word ko specify kar sakte hain while we search for the next word while we our brain is processing for the next word or both of these processes would take place as we flesh out this uh, syntactic structure so sometimes both of the things are taking place that we are specifically we're phonetically specifying one word while we are searching for the next word and then both of these processes could take place as we would uh, flesh out the syntactic structure jab hum uska structure develop karte hain so in a way ye parallel times pe पैरल उसमें ऑल टुगेदर हो रहा है एट द सेम टाइम वी आर कंडक्टिंग दोज प्रोसेस एट द सेम टाइम नाउ लैंग्वेज एग्जाम्पल्स इफ वी टेक लैंग्वेज एग्जाम्पल्स इन दिस नाउ टेक द एग्जाम्पल्स शोन बिलो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन वन वी इंटरप्रेट द मिडल लेटर एज एन एज इन वन वर्ड बट एज एन ए इन द अदर यानी एक वर्ड में हम उसको एज एन एच उसको इंटरप्रेट करते हैं एंड एज सेकेंड में हम एज एन ए now despite the fact that the letter is physically identical in the two cases so despite the fact that the letter is physically identical is cheez ke bawajood then the other examples 2 and 5 show degraded letters now it is not difficult however to identify what the word is in each so we take two sentences in the first example we will take a sentence and we would say that we would use one word um in one word we would the middle letter would be h and the other would be a ab physically identical nahi hai ye dono now the other example in 2 and 5 that we would show degraded letters now it is not difficult however to identify what the word is in each case so jab wo bilkul different ho jayenge identical nahi rahenge so unko identify karna bahut easy hoga the three degraded letters in example 2 can be identified respectively as r e and d 
ठीक है अब टू में हमने तीन आइडेंटिफाइबल लेटर्स ले लिए आर ई एंड डी विच स्पेल्स रेड बट द सेम थ्री डिग्रेडेड लेटर्स अपेरिंग इन अदर एग्जाम्पल्स आर रेदर आइडेंटिफाइड एज पी एफ एंड बी तो अगर हम कहीं और उसको अपेयर करते हैं देखते हैं तो इट वुड बी आइडेंटिफाइड इन अ डिफरेंट साउंड इन डिफरेंट वे एट फर्स्ट ग्लांस ऑल दिस मे अपेयर टू बी पेराडॉक्सिकल तो फर्स्ट ग्लांस में आपने एक दफा देखा इट माइट बी पेराडॉक्सिकल तो ये इट सीम्स रीजनेबल to say that we are using the context to help decide the identity of the degraded letters so humne us context ko in example ke slide ko humne isliye use kiya that it explains uh, the context of uh, helping you decide the identity of the degraded letters now however the context is a word so context ek word hai and we normally think of first identifying the letters before identifying the word so first mein hum agar context dekhe to context ek word hai we normally think hum jab normal hum when we want to uh, try to understand a language we would say that we first would identify the letters before we identify the word hum pehle letters ko identify karenge unko pehchanenge unko samjhenge fir uske baad lafz ko samajhne ki koshish karenge Now, how can we use the word to help identify the letter? अब हम word को कैसे use करेंगे letter को identify करने के लिए Now, the answer lies in parallel processing. इसका answer parallel processing में है Assume that we are identifying the individual letters and at the same time actively trying to fit the letters into various possible words. So ये स्यूम कीजिए ये अंदाजा लगाइए कि हम आइडेंटिफाई कर रहे हैं द इंडिविजुअल लेटर्स सेपरेट लेटर्स एट द सेम टाइम बट एक्टिवली आल्सो ट्राइंग टू फिट लेटर्स वही लेटर्स को हम साथ साथ ये भी ट्राई कर रहे हैं कि उनको हम पॉसिबल uh, वर्ड्स में कन्वर्ट कर दें सो सम ऑफ द आइडेंटिफाइड लेटर्स अनेबल अस टू रिकोगनाइज द वर्ड एज अ फेमिलियर वर्ड जैसे हमने रेड का वर्ड देखा वो हमें एकदम से आइडेंटिफाई हो गया एक फेमिलियर वर्ड लगा रेड the color red and we immediately identified it and then we identified the obscured letter from our knowledge of the spelling of the word so sometimes uh, hum uh, identify letter ko en enables us to recognize the word as a familiar word koi ye cheez recognize karne mein leke ki ye jana pehchana word hai familiar word hai and sometimes then uh, we identify the obscured uh, letter कोई ऐसा लेटर जो आपके नॉलेज फ्रॉम आवर नॉलेज ऑफ द स्पेलिंग ऑफ द वर्ड यानी हमें ये नॉलेज है कि ये स्पेलिंग में ये वर्ड यूज होता है तो दैट्स हाउ वी आइडेंटिफाइड नाउ दैट इज वी आर प्रोसेसिंग एट लेटर एंड वर्ड लेवल सिमिल्टेनियसली सो व्हाट आर वी डूइंग एट द सेम टाइम सिमिल्टेनियसली वी आर प्रोसेसिंग द लेटर एंड द वर्ड दैट वुड बी इन पैरल प्रोसेसिंग हम लेटर को भी सेपरेटली देख रहे हैं और वर्ड को भी प्रोसेस कर रहे हैं नाउ सीरियल मॉडल्स हैव बीन इन्फ्लुएंस्ड इन द स्टडी ऑफ कॉग्नेशन सो सीरियल मॉडल्स को यूज किया गया है स्टडी में इन कॉग्नेशन फ्रॉम 1960 टू 1980, 1960 से 1980 तक हमने उनको स्टडी किया इन पार्ट बिकॉज मेनी ऑफ द मॉडल्स वर बेस्ड ऑन एन एनोलॉजी विद इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कंप्यूटर which tends to execute processes rapidly in a serial manner so part of the time serial models ko jab hum influence karte hain ke study dekhne ke liye that in part because many of the models jo bahut sare iske models hain they were based on an analogy ek analogy pe based the with the electronic computer which tends to execute processes rapidly in a serial manner jo uh, process ko bahut rapidly bahut tezi se uh, serial manner mein usko प्रोसेस करता है ना पैरल डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड प्रोसेसिंग मॉडल्स हैव बीन डिस्क्राइब्ड एज न्यूरली इंस्पायर्ड बिकॉज दे यूज द ब्रेन सो पैरल डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड वो चीज एज अ कंप्यूटर की तरह हम उसको कहेंगे कि सीरियल मॉडल्स जो है वो कॉग्निशन को आपके रिकोगनाइज करते हैं ठीक है क्योंकि वो सीरियल वाइज चल रहा है सीरियल मैनर से पैरल डिस्ट्रीब्यूटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड प्रोसेसिंग को हम मॉडल्स को कहेंगे कि दे आर डिस्क्राइब न्यूरली 
इनको हम वर्ड न्यूरली यूज करेंगे वाई बिकॉज दे यूज द ब्रेन रादर देन द कंप्यूटर एज द डोमिनेट मेटाफोर सो हमारा ज्यादा कंप्यूटर के बजाय हमारा ब्रेन यूज हो रहा होता है पैरल सम ऑथर्स नाउ रमल हार्ट एंड मैकलीलैंड इन नाइनटीन एटी सिक्स थियोराइज मॉडल एज अ वास्ट इंटरकनेक्टेड नेटवर्क ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन नोट विद ईच नोट इन्फ्लुएंसिंग एंड बींग इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाय अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ एड जेसन नोट सम ऑथर्स दे इन्होंने कोग्नेटिव मॉडल को थियोराइज किया था टू इंटरकनेक्टेड नेटवर्क ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन नोट यानी इंटरनेट कनेक्टेड नेटवर्क उनके देखने के लिए कि ईच नोट जो है वो किस तरह दूसरे को इन्फ्लुएंस करता है टू मेक इट टू अ लार्जर नंबर ऑफ एडजेस नोट नाउ टॉप डाउन एंड बॉटम अप प्रोसेसिंग लाइक आई वॉज डिस्कसिंग इन द प्रीवियस लाइड नाउ टॉप डाउन एंड बॉटम अप प्रोसेसिंग सपोज यूर लिस्निंग टू अ लेक्चर लेक्चर ट्राइंग टू कॉम्प्रहेंड वॉट शी ही सेज एंड रिमेंबर द मेन पॉइंट ऑफ द लेक्चर सो एक चीज आप सपोज करें कि आप जैसे अभी यूर लिस्निंग टू अ लेक्चर ठीक है एंड यू आर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट शी और ही इज साइन एंड रिमेंबर द मेन पॉइंट ऑफ द लेक्चर तो आपको लेक्चर uh, में कह दिए कि आपने लेक्चर सुनना है और उसका आपने अंडरस्टैंड करके मेन पॉइंट ऑफ द लेक्चर आपने याद रखने योर लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग कैन बी एनालाइज एज अकरिंग एट सेवर लेवल्स सो आपका उस वक्त जो आप लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग कर रहे हैं दैट कैन बी एनालाइज एज इट इज अकरिंग एट सेवरल डिफरेंट लेवल्स एट द लोएस्ट लेवल सबसे लोएस्ट लेवल पे द फोनोलॉजिकल लेवल you are identifying the phonemes and syllables that the teacher is using so sabse lowest aap usko jab level pe describe karte hain so it would identify the phonemes and the syllables that the teacher is using aap uske phonemes dekhenge phonological level pe uske syllables dekhenge ki wo teacher kya use kar raha at a higher level ye sabse lowest level pe hua ab now at a highest level the lexical level phonological level is the lowest level lexical level is the highest level now at a higher level you are using those phonemes and syllables to retrieve the lexical entries of the words from your semantic memory so when you are processing listening to a lecture when you are processing the phonemes and syllables at a phonological level phir higher level pe aap lexical level pe kya karte hain aap unhi phonemes aur unhi syllables ko retrieve karte hain taki lexical entries ho jo aapke paas already lexical aapke semantic memory mein aapke paas already available hai material theek hai words ka vocabulary ka aap usse relate karte ho and then you identify or understand or comprehend it now at the next level then the next level on the syntactic level you are organizing the words into constituents and you are forming a phrase structure for each incoming sentence so aap next level pe kya kar rahe hain syntactic level pe ki aap organize kar rahe hain uh, words ko constituents mein theek hai and aap ek uh, phrase ko form kar rahe ho phrase structure ko फॉर इनकमिंग सेंटेंस जो जो जुमले आपको आते जा रहे हैं आप समझते जा रहे हैं आप उसको फेस स्ट्रक्चर में डाल रहे हैं एट द हाइस्ट लेवल फिर द डिस्कोर्स लेवल यू आर लिंकिंग द मीनिंग ऑफ अ गिवन सेंटेंस विथ प्रोसीडिंग वंस एंड देर फॉर यू आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग सेंटेंसेस इन टू हायर ऑर्डर यूनिट्स सो आप यानी वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट साइको लिंग्विस्टिक्स दैट मीन्स लाइक आई टोल्ड यू द वे द ब्रेन वुड प्रोसेस अ लैंग्वेज इज अ स्टडी ऑफ दैट सो इन दिस वट यू वी वुड से दैट लोअस्ट लेवल फोनेटिकल लेवल देन द लेक्सिकल लेवल देन द सिंटेक्टिव लेवल इन विच वी फॉर्म द वर्ड्स एंड ट्राई टू फॉर्म एम इन टू अ फ्रेज स्ट्रक्चर फॉर द इनकमिंग सेंटेंसेस द लास्ट द हाइस्ट लेवल वुड बी द डिस्कोर्स लेवल Now in this we are doing we're linking the meaning of a given sentence with preceding ones hum abhi koi ek sentence jo maine bola hoga usko aap link karoge isse pehle bole hue sentence ke sath so what you're doing is you're taking one sentence from right now and with the preceding one that went in the back that i had already discussed you are combining them to trying to understand 
the meaning. When you put them together, you try to understand the meaning of the whole discussion. And therefore, you are organizing sentences into higher order units. Or wahan pe aap sentences ko organize karte ho brain mein higher order units mein. Now, bottom up processing. Bottom up processing mein kya hai? Is a processing which proceeds from the lowest level to the highest level of processing. So lowest level, aapka us level se aap chale, thik hai? Phenological, phonetic se. Phir aap ne lexical pe aai, phir aap syntactic pe aai, phir aap discourse level pe aai. So bottom up processing would be the way how you understand or how you tackle uh, certain words or sentences coming from below, trying to understand it from the base. So to the highest level of processing in such a way that all of the lower levels of processing operate without influence from the higher levels. Higher levels ki influence ke baghair bhi aap niche wale levels ko solve karte ja rahe hain. You're listening to the phonemes and the syllables, you're putting them into words, then the lexical, trying to find the meaning of the words, then moving on, finding the structure of the sentence, then organizing uh, after the sen uh, sentence structure, then you uh, proceed one sentence and match it with something that has gone before, trying to understand the whole um, point of the discussion. So, bottom up process ye hoga ke aap higher level ki influence ke bagayar aap unko step wise deke jaare. This means that the identification of phonemes is not affected by the lexical, syntactic or discourse levels. Yeni phonemes ki jo identification aap kar rahe ho, wo lexical, syntactic or discourse se bilkul jo hai affect nahi ho rahi hai. Now, it means that the retrieval of words is not effective by syntactic and so on. Or, aap jo words ko retrieve kar rahe ho, wo structure se related nahi hai, us structure bhi effect nahi kar rahe. However, as we have already seen about the serial and parallel processing, there is some reason to doubt that a strict bottom-up model will provide a fully comprehensive account of how we understand language. So, ab kyunke humne already ye dekh liye ki serial um, processing and parallel processing kaise work karti hai. So, some, there is some reason ki humne ye doubt create hota hai ki sirf agar hum bottom up model hi use karenge, uh, it will provide, uh, ye humne shayid puri tarah uh, fully comprehensive account na provide kar sake. Mene full understanding na ho aapko or how to understand a language. Ab aagya second, a top down processing model. In contrast, now a top-down model in contrast states that some information at the higher levels may influence processing at the lower levels. So, top-down se agar hum upar se jayenge, niche discourse se leke, phir hum uh, next jate hain, uh, syntactic pe, uske baad lexical pe, phir phonemes pe. So, it states that some information at a higher level may influence Higher level ka jo hai, maybe information wo shayid lower level ko influence kare. Us pe asar ho. Now for example, a sentence context may influence the identification of words within the structure. So, koi sentence ka context jo hai, it might influence the identification of words. Words ki identification kisi ek sentence mein usko influence kar sakta. Now speaking more uh, intuitively, a top-down model of processing is one in which one's expectations play a significant role. So, if we see this, the top-down model, jo hai, it is uh, when it's processing, it, that uh, is one in which one's expectations, your uh, expectations, jo hai, wo ek significant role play. Your expectations are that this result will come. <clears throat> now, in NB, there is some relation between the preceding two alternative types of information processes. This may relationship hai, two alternative types. Mein. A top-down process is often, but not necessarily, a parallel process. And a bottom-up process is usually serial. So, we will say that when we take phonemes and lexical structures, we go to the syntactic and the discourse, pe jate, that would be a bottom-up. And that will come in the serial process. And we use top-down not necessarily all the time, but we will say that it is parallel processing. Ho rahi hai. 
because we are trying to understand the meaning at a different context. Now, automatic and controlled processes. When we go on studying about uh, automatic and controlled processes, when we discuss the role of the working memory. Now, working memory along within other mental memory structures. We introduce the idea that we may have a fixed processing capacity for handling information. So, we introduce the idea that we have a fixed processing capacity for handling information, information handle. Karne ke liye. This notion has been a central assumption in a variety of accounts of human cognitive functioning. So, this notion, it has been a central assumption. It is an important concept when considering human performance on complex tasks such as language processing. So language processing is considered to be a complex tag. And um, it's an important concept at that time considering the human performance, how humans would perform in processing a language. So when the task is complex, one part of the task may draw substantial resources from this limited pool of resources. So sometimes, when your uh, task is very complex or very difficult, so one part of the task is probably your substantial resources se, uh, from this limited pool of resources, you will draw substantial resources. Draw karega. Thereby, leaving insufficient resources for the other parts of the task. So, उस जगह पे जब वो इधर से substantial resources उसने ले लिए इसमें से तो बाकियों के लिए वो insufficient resources छोड़ गया बाकी task के लिए resulting in overall impaired performance so उसका result क्या बना आपका impaired performance आपकी performance आपकी वो uh, damaged हो गई clear नहीं now uh, tasks that draw substantially from this limited pool of resources are called controlled tasks and the processes involved in these tasks are referred to as controlled processes. So tasks you hand you in substantially draw um, from this limited pool of resources are called controlled tasks. Kamunko control task bolte. And the processes involved in these tasks are referred as controlled processes. So control tasks humne jo task draw kiya, usko humne control task ka naam de diya. Aur jo process ko humne control process ka naam de diya. Now tasks do not uh, require, that do not require substantial resources are called automatic tasks. Ab jis mein substantial resources ki zarurat nahi hai, wo automatic tasks honge. And processes that do not require extensive capacity are referred to as automatic processes. So, something that we would do just automatically. So, as a task, jinko substantial resources required nahi hai, unko hum uh, automatic uh, task kahenge. And wo processes that do not require extensive capacity, jinko zyada capacity nahi chahiye, they are referred to automatic processes. Now, various criteria have been used to determine whether a task is automatic or controlled. So, we have seen this, if we have seen various uh, criteria, dekhiye. so it has been determined that whether a task, uh, we determine karna na, ke wo task controlled hai ya automatic. Hai. Now, this criteria includes sensitivity to developmental and strategy effects. So, it's seen the sensitivity of developmental and how uh, it affects the strategy. For both these criteria, control tasks are more sensitive than automatic tasks. So control tasks are in both criteria, mein, automatic tasks are nisbat zyada sensitive. Hai. That is, automatic tasks appears to be unrelated to the age of the individual or to the strategy employed. So automatic tasks are not related to the age of the individual or the individual. And whatever the strategy applied to it, it doesn't relate to it. Now, several tasks, however, become automatic as a consequence of our degree of practice with them. For example, like tying our shoes. So, several tasks are like this, which we automatically know that we have to do it. We have to store it in our memory. 
कुछ चीजें तो कंट्रोल्ड हैं जो हम सोचते हैं और करते हैं सोच के उस पर अप्लाई करते हैं और स्ट्रेटजी क्या हमने अप्लाई करनी है कुछ ऐसे टास्क हैं जो डिग्री ऑफ प्रैक्टिस हम बार बार प्रैक्टिस करते रहते हैं तो हम वो चीजें सीख जाते हैं और फिर उसके बाद ऑटोमेटिकली हो जाती हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल जैसे हम जूतों के लेसेस ट्राई करते हैं ना वो एक चीज है कि हमने स्टार्ट में सीखा बचपन में सीखा और उसके बाद हम उस पर प्रैक्टिस करते रहे एंड नाउ वी आर सो यूज टू इट कि हम बगैर सोचे समझे ऑटोमेटिकली हम उसको ट्राई कर लेंगे लेसेस वी डोंट हैव टू यूज एनी कंट्रोल प्रोसेस ऑन दैट नाउ दे वर दीज डिमांड्स वर और दीज एग्जाम्पल्स वर मोर डिमांडिंग व्हेन वी वर यंग एंड हैव बिकम ऑटोमेटिक थ्रू प्रैक्टिस सो एट दैट टाइम वेन वी वर यंग हम वेन वी वर लर्निंग हाउ टू ट्राई आर शूज उस वक्त हमें ये डिफिकल्टी होती थी ये टास्क हमारे लिए डिफिकल्ट था डिमांडिंग था But now, through practice, at this age when we grow up, it's all an automatic task. So that is the difference between an automatic or a control task. Now, illustrations. For example, different examples will be used to illustrate this distinction in various domains of spoken and written language. So, both are such examples that is co. Distinction co is far co illustrate karenge in the domains of spoken. and written language both in spoken and written language now for example one language processing tasks that is automatic at least for adults is recognizing common words so language se relate jab hum isko dekhte hain so language processing task mein adults ke liye sabse automatic task kya hai common words ko recognize karna most probably due to our large amount of experience with words क्योंकि हमारे पास बहुत लार्ज वोकेबलरी होती है हमारा एक्सपीरियंस बहुत है वर्ड्स के साथ इन कॉन्ट्रास्ट बिल्डिंग अप अ फ्रेज स्ट्रक्चर फॉर अ सेंटेंस इज अ कंट्रोल्ड प्रोसेस बट उसके कॉन्ट्रास्ट में इवन दो ऑटोमेटिक प्रोसेस है कि हम कॉमन वर्ड्स को इमीडिएटली रिकोगनाइज कर लेते हैं पहचान लेते हैं बीन एडल्ट बट हम जब फेज फ्रेज स्ट्रक्चर बनाना चाहते हैं बिल्ड करना चाहते हैं कोई जुमला बनाना चाहते हैं उन वर्ड्स को यूज करके तो वो कंट्रोल प्रोसेस होगा बिकॉज एट दैट टाइम वो नेचुरली नहीं हो गया वो हमने बनाना है वर्ड्स का समझ आना दैट इज अ नेचुरल प्रोसेस ऑटोमेटिक प्रोसेस बट सेंटेंस को बना के प्रोसेस करना दैट वुड बी अ कंट्रोल प्रोसेस ना मॉड्यूलैरिटी ऑफ द लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम अब मॉड्यूलैरिटी अगर हम पढ़ें लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम में विद इन लिंग्विस्टिक्स The concept of modularity refers to the independence of different linguistic subsystems within the grammar. So, linguistics के अंदर अगर हम ये concept देखें, तो concept जो है modularity का, it refers to the independence of the different linguistic subsystems. यानी ये different linguistic subsystems जो system है, उसके subsystems बन गए, ठीक है grammar के within, उसको ये describe करता है. Now, within cognitive psychology, modularity refers to the degree of independence of language processing. अब अगर हम cognitive psychology में देखें, तो modularity जो है वो refer करती है सिर्फ degree of independence of language processing, ठीक है language processing system. Now, taken as a whole, जब हम उसको कट्टा लेते हैं from the general cognitive system, so we separate uh, the model modularity of the cognitive psychology. When we are taking it from like uh, the general cognitive system, उससे अलग कर देते हम language processing को independence उसकी आ जाती है. Now the modularity position is that the language processing system is a unique set of cognitive abilities that cannot be reduced to general principles of cognition. So modularity position क्या है अब language processing system में कि it's a unique set of cognitive abilities. That cannot be reduced. जो reduce नहीं हो सकते, कम नहीं हो सकते, general principles of cognition की वजह से. So the alternative um, position stresses the interconnections between language and cognitive processes. So alternate positions क्या stress कर रही हैं? The interconnections between language and cognitive processes by emphasizing, ज़्यादा emphasize करके the role of concepts such as working memory. Automatic processing and parallel processing in language comprehension, production, and acquisition. So, alternative positions. Our stress 
کے کیا ہے بٹوین لینگویج اینڈ کگنیٹیو پروسیسز میں کہ ہم ایمفسائز کر رہے ہوتے ہیں رول کانسیپٹس جو ہیں ورکن میمری کا کانسیپٹ ٹھیک ہے آٹومیٹک پروسیسنگ کا کانسیپٹ پیرلل پروسیسنگ کا کانسیپٹ اینڈ ہاؤ پیرلل پروسیسنگ از یوزڈ ان لینگویج انڈرسٹینڈنگ ہاؤ وی پروڈیوس اٹ اینڈ ان دا ایکوزیشن اف ہاؤ وی ایکوائر دا لینگویج سو دا نوشن دیٹ لینگویج از ماڈیولر is related but not identical so if we say that this notion that language is modular so it is related but it is not identical to the argument that our language faculty is biologically innate so if we say that this argument that our language faculty is biologically innate now certainly one way to talk about modules is to talk about innate modules but this is not a necessary property لیکن یہ ضروری نہیں ہے a module is dedicated module اب کیا ہے a module is dedicated to performing one aspect of a complex task ایک aspect کوئی بھی ایک حصہ اس کا کسی complex task کا solve کرنا اس کو perform کرنے کو ہم module کہیں گے now whether this assignment is biologically given or required through experience is a separate issue اب یہ سپریٹ ایشو ہے کہ چاہے وہ بائیلوجکلی گیون ہے آپ نے یا پھر آپ نے کسی ایکسپیرینس کے تھو آپ نے اکوائر کیا حاصل کیا اس کو that's another thing but module would be the aspect of performing a complex task now an example of language processing up to now we have briefly presented some distinctions that are relevant to language processing so abhi tak humne we've just given some distinctions in it now let us now examine a specific example and see how these distinctions might apply now let's take this example and see how this distinction would apply here now number one would be i was afraid of ali's powerful punch especially since it had already laid out many tougher men who had bragged they could handle that much alcohol so yeah preference uh, you can see Clark and Clark 1977 on page 81 for a reference to this so I was afraid of Ali's powerful punch Ali ke powerful punch se mujhe dar tha especially since it had already laid out many tougher men kyunke اس کے پاور فوان سے مجھے اس لئے ڈر تھا کیونکہ اس نے آرڈی مجھ سے کہیں زیادہ ایسے جو ٹاف مین تھے یا سخت اس میں تھے جو بریگ کرتے تھے جو کہتے تھے کہ ہمیں جو ہے they could handle that much alcohol کہ ان کو یہ نہیں پرابلم نہیں ہوگا اور even with alcohol use they can still fight Ali but I was afraid of that powerful punch so that sentence number one is another example of a garden path sentence ہم نے گارڈن پیت سنٹنس پہلے بھی لیکٹرز میں پڑھا ہے سی ان دے پارسین سٹریٹیجی سیکشن آپ پارسین سٹریٹیجی سیکشن میں چیک کر سکتے ہیں گارڈن پیت سنٹنس کا ریلیونس سو اس میں جو ہے یہ گارڈن پیت سنٹنس آگیا ناو دے کی ورڈ ہیر اس پنچ ویچ کن مین ایدر ان آلکوہالک بیوریج اور اب باکسین پنچ اب دو چیزیں آگی نا آپ any powerful punch punch could be an uh, alcoholic beverage take a, a mixture of fruit drinks and alcohol or a boxing punch yeah the keyword to punch again of this sentence may up with cocaine says explain cutting it that is the garden path sentence how would you understand now I was afraid of Ali's powerful punch especially since it had already laid out many tougher men who had bragged they could handle that much alcohol so then a second part of sentence jab aya usse hume clear hua ke wo alis powerful punch wasn't ke uske uske boxing punch ya uske mukke se baat nahi ho rhi thi but alcohol beverage ke baare mein baat ho rhi thi aur uske yani wo punch jo banata hai usse mujhe dar tha kyun ke wo mazid aise log jo bade tough the jo ye kehte the ke hume isse zyada bhi hum alcohol handle kar lete aur hume kuch nahi hota unki bragging ke bawajood mujhe iske powerful punch se dar tha so then that relates you see when you finish it so the subjective impression for most people at the end of the sentence is i have assumed the wrong meaning 
तो मैंने भी रॉन्ग मीनिंग अस्यूम किया पहले वन आई फर्स्ट रेड द फर्स्ट हाफ द सेंटेंस आई वुड हैव थॉट ऑफ इट एज अ बॉक्सिंग पंच सो मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल विल आल्सो हैव अस्यूम द रॉन्ग मीनिंग मोस्ट प्रोबेबली बिकॉज अली हु इज अ फेमस बॉक्सर मोहम्मद अली हु इज अ फेमस बॉक्सर एंड बी आई हैव टू बैक ट्रैक सो समटाइम्स इसलिए क्योंकि वो शायद उन्होंने गलत मीनिंग ले लिया हो कि वो अली इज अ फेमस बॉक्सर सो इसलिए वो बॉक्सिंग पंच के बारे में बात हो रही है सो अ प्रोसेसिंग मॉडल दैट वुड अकाउंट फॉर सच इम्प्रेशन माइट लुक लाइक दिस सो प्रोसेसिंग मॉडल जो इस अकाउंट को इम्प्रेशन के लिए इट माइट लुक लाइक दिस दैट वेन वी इनकाउंटर अ वर्ड दैट हैज मोर देन वन मीनिंग जब भी हम कोई ऐसा वर्ड ढूंढते हैं जिसका एक से ज्यादा मीनिंग होता है ठीक है ये हमारे सामने आता है वी सर्वे द इमीडिएट इन्वायरमेंट ऑफ दैट वर्ड तो हम इमीडिएट सर्व करते हैं उसका मेक अ रैपिड डिसीजन एज टू द मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट मीनिंग सबसे ज्यादा जो हमें क्लोजेस्ट मीनिंग समझ आती है हम उसको सर्वे करके उसको चूज करते हैं एंड देन स्टे विद दैट मीनिंग अनलेस इट बिकम्स ऑब्वियस दैट वी आर इन एर ठीक है सो प्रीवियस सेंटेंस में हमने पंच का वर्ड मुझे फौरन आया पंच बॉक्सिंग पंच ठीक है पहला सब को समझ आता है तो वो इस पार्ट से सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेन आई सॉ दैट वर्ड आई मेड ए रैपिड डिसीजन ऑफ मैंने उसका इमीडिएट एनवायरमेंट देखा एंड आई थॉट यस वन दे आर रेफरिंग टू अली बिकॉज अली इज अ फेमस बॉक्सर सो इट हैज टू बी अ बॉक्सिंग पंच मैंने मोस्ट रैपिडली वो डिसीजन किया कि ये इसका अप्रोप्रिएट मीनिंग होगा लेकिन जब मैंने फिर बाकी का सेंटेंस पढ़ा ठीक है सो इट डिड नॉट मेक सेंस so the rest of the sentence when i read about uh, the rest of a part then i it was obvious that i had made an error in it now this model corresponds reasonably well with subjective impressions but are these impressions accurate in ye model correspond karta hai ki aapke reasonably well subjective impressions ho but kya ye impressions accurate hai correct hai now this model assumes serial processing वन मीनिंग एट अ टाइम सो ये सीरियल प्रोसेसिंग का चल रहा था वन मीनिंग एट अ टाइम क्योंकि वो कॉमा डाल दिया उसने बीच में पहला सेंटेंस को हमने मीनिंग उसका समझ लिया फिर उसके बाद सेकेंड का ना वन मीनिंग एट अ टाइम वो टॉप डाउन प्रोसेसिंग प्लेइंग ओनली ए लिमिटेड रोल तो टॉप डाउन प्रोसेसिंग जब हमने यूज किया उसका बहुत लिमिटेड रोल था डिसीजन इन इज बेस्ड ऑन अमीडिएट कॉन्टेक्सट नॉट ऑन द इंटायर सेंटेंस तो डिसीजन जो फॉरन फॉरन अंडरस्टैंड किया वो अमीडिएट कॉन्टेक्स्ट पे जो अमीडिएटली सामने आए हमने उसको ही पंच समझ लिया बट पूरे जुमले से रिलेटेड नहीं था पूरे जुमले को अगर हम पढ़ लेते तो देन इट वुड हैव बीन अ डिफरेंट मीनिंग नाउ बिकॉज द एम्फोसिस इज ऑन डिसीजन द कॉम्प्रहेंडर मस्ट मेक ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ कॉम्प्रहेंशन द मॉडल एम्फोसाइज कंट्रोल प्रोसेस मोर देन ऑटोमेटिक प्रोसेस तो क्योंकि अब इसमें एम्फेसिस या इस पर जोर दिया जा रहा है उन डिसीजन पे जो कॉम्प्रहेंडर जो समझने वाला है द कॉम्प्रहेंडर मस्ट मेक ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ कॉम्प्रहेंशन द मॉडल एम्फेसाइज कंट्रोल प्रोसेस इज मोर देन ऑटोमेटिक तो इसलिए ज्यादा क्योंकि हमने वो ये चीज देखनी है ना एम्फेसिस के कैसे समझ आ रही है ठीक है और कैसे उसको अंडरस्टैंड किया जा रहा है तो वो कंट्रोल प्रोसेस में चला जाएगा मोर देन ऑटोमेटिक प्रोसेस ना फाइनली This approach can be safely described as non-modular. So, this approach को हम non-modular uh, express कर सकते हैं. It relies on our general ability to figure things out. So, how we understand things, it relies on that, not on a specialized ability that is related to language. It's not just the ability which is related to language, but just a general ability to find things out or trying to understand things. it might even be described as common sense so sometimes we can even describe it as common sense common sense aapki aapko batati hai ki this means this and such and such and such the meanings of words and how to identify them we could however develop a completely contrasting model ab even though ke hum ye dekha hai humne but hum we can make a contrasting model now we could begin with the assumption that people um routinely and simultaneously activate more than one meaning of an ambiguous word or semantic memory 
सो हम ये भी देख सकते हैं कि हम इसको कंट्रास्ट कर सकते हैं मॉडल को कि मे बी इट्स नॉट जस्ट द कंट्रोल्ड इट माइट बी पैरेलल नॉट जस्ट द सेमेंटिक मेमोरी बट पैरेलल प्रोसेस आल्सो we could assume that people routinely and simultaneously activate more than one meaning of an ambiguous word koi bhi ek word ko hum ek ya ek se zyada meaning bhi nikal sakte hain theek hai jo hamare semantic memory mein aati hai now we could also further assume that the retriever of multiple meanings is a fixed property of the lexicon or sometimes hum ye bhi assume kar sakte hain ki hum jab retrieve karte hain multiple meanings also it's a fixed property of the lexicon jo bhi hamara lexicon hai and that it is automatic modular and bottom up so not related at all to the sentence context sentence context are related nahi karta now although this latter model may sound counter initiative uh, there is some psychological evidence in favor of it even though be counter initiative aapko show kar raha hai it doesn't sound very good but isme psychological evidence aapko nazar aa rahi hai favor mein now it appears indeed that we automatically activate all the meanings of an ambiguous word at least briefly but it also appears that we decide among the choices rather quickly perhaps within 3 or 4 words so ye ye keh raha hai ki hum automatically words ke meaning hum do teen dhoond lete hain jab hum dekhte hain koi bhi word um and we are trying to retrieve it or at least briefly but sometimes it also says that uh, we decide among the choices rather quickly hum unme se phir hame do teen lafz ke matlab pata lag gaye humne usme se koi ek word choose kar liya and uh, foran soch liya ki iska ye matlab hoga out of 3 to 4 words now thus there may be two strategies of processing so isme do strategies of processing ho gaye and automative uh, matic stage in which all meanings are retrieved and uh, more controlled stage then uh, that is more top down in nature so uh, sometimes those strategies of processing one would be an automatic stage which we can retrieve all the meanings and the second would be a controlled stage in that would concern with the top down processing in nature the notion that we might the concept that we might have two different ways of approaching a sentence with a ambiguous word is not limited to this one particular example so sometimes ye cheez ke do different ways hain of approaching a sentence uh, we wouldn't limit it to one particular example now the state of affairs um, is the rule in human information processing this would be the rule for human information processing in which we nearly always have multiple ways of doing things jisme hame constantly multiple ways hain jisme hum cheeze karte hain and in which we usually employ the easiest aur jisme hum easily sabse easiest jo hai na employ karte hain fastest and most efficient strategy that will work उसका फास्टेस्ट और मोस्ट एफिशिएंट स्ट्रेटजी को हम देखते हैं और उसको एम्प्लॉय करते हैं नाउ ऑल दिस शोज दैट इफ वी आर टू डेवलप अ सॉलिड नॉलेज ऑफ हाउ लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग टेक्स प्लेस वी विल नीड टू रिलाई ऑन नॉट ऑन इंट्रोस्पेक्शन और सब्जेक्टिव इंप्रेशन बट रैदर ऑन सिमेंटिक एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन so all of this shows that agar hum uh, we are to develop a solid knowledge agar humne solid knowledge develop karni hai uh, of how language processes takes place ke language process kaise take place karti hai kaise how, how does it start then we will need to rely on introspection uh, or subjective impression so humne introspection ya subjective uh, uski jo hai impressions dekh liye but नहीं नोट करेंगे इतना जितना हम सिमेंटिक एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन को देखेंगे ये सिस्टमेटिक एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन बट सो हाउ वी अंडरस्टैंड द वर्ड्स एंड हाउ वी पुट इट इन अ सिस्टम ना डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड लैंग्वेज एक्विजिशन इट वुड बी हेल्पफुल टू अंडरस्टैंड द कोगनेटिव एबिलिटीज द चिल्ड्रन ब्रिंग टू द टास्क ऑफ एक्वायरिंग देयर नेटिव लैंग्वेज सो अगर हम डिवेलपमेंट देखें प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम में इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड लैंग्वेज एक्विजेशन ये समझने के लिए कि लैंग्वेज एक्विजेशन है क्या 
What is language? How do we acquire language? It would be helpful to understand the cognitive abilities children bring to the task of acquiring their native language. So we will help them help them to understand how children learn language. How do they acquire language? They will pick their native language and acquire language. It would help us understand language acquisition better. Now to this aim, let us ask to what extent the information processing system that we have outlined above is operating during the first few years of life. So, if we look at this, the processing system which is our, what we have outlined above is operating during the first few. Our first few years of life, which is starting when we are little kids, what kind of things are operating in it? It is clear enough that children encode, store, and retrieve a great deal of linguistic information in their first few years. So, ये चीज़ तो एक टन है कि children जो है encode करते हैं, store करते हैं, और retrieve करते हैं a great deal of linguistic information. बहुत सारी linguistic information ऐसी वो first few years में ही gather up कर लेते हैं, उनको store भी कर लेते हैं, समझ भी लेते हैं और retrieve भी कर लेते हैं. We therefore may begin by assuming that the information processing system as discussed above is for the most part developmentally invariant. So, we can assume that the information processing system like we discussed in the previous slides is the, for the most part developmentally invariant. Now, for the most part only because some components by definition must change. The episodic portion of the permanent memory is a repository of one's experience and thus will clearly grow with experience. But on the whole, we may tentatively assume that the sensory stores, working memory and capacity limitations we have emphasized are present to the same extent in newborn infants as in mature adults. So, अगर होल में हम देखें सिर्फ, ठीक है, so it's not all about just how children learn, but it would be the same extent पे, even in mature adults that we may tentatively assume that the sensory stores, आपके sensory stores जो हैं, आपकी working memory और आपकी capacity limitations, we have emphasized are present to the same extent. यानी बच्चों में भी newborn infant में भी उतना ही sensory store working memory होगी, जितने एक mature adult में होगी. Now, this may seem an unlikely uh, hypothesis for we ordinarily think of children and especially infants as cognitively very different creatures than adults. So, sometimes yeah, shayad aapko unlikely is liye, uh, lage ke, um, when we consider children, we consider them to um, have a different, that they are very different from adults, that their way of understanding things is very different. But uh, the way their sensory stores work and their uh, working memory works is the same. So recent research, however, has suggested that there are some important cognitive similarities between children and adults. So recent research has seen that there are some important similarities, important cognitive similarities. Even if everything is not exactly the same way we store or how the memory works, but still, there are so many things that are important and some important cognitive similarities. Asi chizen chu children and adults me milti jolti hai. Now, when we were talking about psycholinguistics and how the brain processes the language, this all is very difficult to understand sometimes when you are looking at the general view. But when you try to understand how the brain will process a language, and how this whole process of memory works. So going from your sensory stores for, to your working memory to your um, permanent memory, all of these would make a huge difference when you can understand them. So today we studied about serial processing, parallel processing, uh, what is um, how you store the memories in permanent memory, the semantic memory, the episodic memory, 
So these are uh, things that are important in trying to understand uh, how the brain or high, how psychology is related to language. So, um, dear students, I hope you have understood this uh, completely, how the brain processes language. And we will further study this in the next uh, lecture. We will continue it on. So, God bless you. Take care. I'll see you next time. Allah Hafiz.